You notice that I've said that all emotion has to be experienced before it can be released. So, if I'm angry with God, I'm going to need to experience anger with God. But if I stay angry with God, am I now experiencing it? What am I doing? I'm wallowing in it. I'm hanging on to it. I'm not releasing it. Right. So it's the same with all of these things. That's why I've written there, for example, don't choose to stay in the capping emotion. Being angry with God for not protecting with my, me when I was little is, a, is an angry feeling that I have. But just staying angry with God for that is not going to get <coughs> me anywhere, is it? What I need to do is step under that emotion at some point. The way I do that is by experiencing my anger with God. So this is where you get out your box and bag or your thing or your hose or whatever else that connects you with your anger or if it's just screaming or yelling like we did before and just really letting fly with God about how angry and frustrated you are with God dealing, having to deal with all those feelings. And if you let yourself experience that emotion in a childlike way, you will pretty much instantly get to the next stage which will be experiencing the grief that you feel with God. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. But if you just stay in a seething state, in a resentful state, what? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, no, more. Just seething and resentful, where you're really, really angry or upset. And submissive is the area where you're forgetting your emotions altogether, really. Right? But if you stay in that seething state with God, you can stay in that state for a hundred years. And there's spirits in the spirit world who've stayed in there for a thousand years. Or even more than that. Do you want to be angry like that for a thousand years? Right. Well, a lot of them do want to be angry like that for a thousand years. That's why they are angry like that for a thousand years. Until they choose to get what's underneath to actually fully experience the anger and go underneath the anger and into what's guiding the anger. Is it though an unawareness? Uh, no, I don't feel so. Like <laughs> anger, anger is a state of not wanting to be aware. It's a choice to be unaware. Yeah. Now, if I experience my anger fully, I will quickly be aware. Yeah. But most of the time we don't want to experience our anger fully and really feel it in a childlike way. Because what does that feel like? Anytime we go in there in a childlike way, it starts feeling powerless, vulnerable, and all those kind of things that, you know, we want to feel powerful. We want to feel the opposite generally. And so we avoid that process. Yep. Don't damage yourself and others by the emotion. So don't feel angry, for example, and then go and go on a murdering spree, you know? And that is an exaggeration, perhaps, of what you might do. But many of us will consider yelling at our children, for example, wouldn't we? Many of us probably have done that, right? Well, that's, a, that's where we're staying in an angry state. And now, instead of expressing it in an appropriate way, what we're doing is we're now dumping it on our children. What is that doing to our children? damaging them. Just the whole thing of me not owning my anger is damaging them. But then dumping it on them as well is damaging them even further, isn't it? And so I'll have more consequences to deal with about that at some point. That's very damaging. Don't do that. Choose to feel your anger and express your anger, but do it in an environment that you are free to do it without harming somebody else. And if you want to harm somebody else, and many of us do, who, who wants to harm the person who hurt you? Like, who feels that way? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Be honest about that. I feel like I really want to harm the person that hurt me. Go into that emotion, but allow yourself to fully experience and express it. The reason why you want to harm the person is because you do not want to feel your grief. And you want the other person to feel what you feel. Yeah. That's the reason why we do that. 
But by expressing that certain emotion towards the person we want to hurt. I didn't say to express it towards the person. Okay, that's that's really. I right. said to express experience it and express it. Neutrally. No, there's no such thing as expressing it neutrally. How do you do without harming the other person? You don't do it with the other person. Yeah, even in my own room, it will still be energetically directed at that person. So no, no. Uh, the, the moment you own it is the moment you are not projecting it. Right? While you see then it, you're not owning it and you are projecting it. The moment you own it and fully experience it, just like a child, you are now not projecting it. How does a child have a tantrum? Like, firstly, it goes into this state of raging against its parent, generally, doesn't it? At that point, it's projecting, right? Then it gets into the next state, which is the tantrum state, right? Which I just fall on the floor, kicking and screaming. <laughs> now they're not projecting it anymore, are they? They're now in it, they're owning it, right? Then what next happens, usually? They get into a big crying fit then, don't they? And get into the causal emotion. You can do that just as rapidly as the child does it. But it's going to require you to have some courage and no self-judgment about that. <laughs>